Alfredo. Yes. I think you can you can start. I I just so I'm sorry about uh, my I don't have my image, but I I I'm suppose we can start again. Okay. Okay. Could be excellent. Okay. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> sorry. First of all, uh, first of all, it's my pleasure to be here because today is a very important day because here and now we're going to be thinking about the future. But my message today or this evening or this morning uh, depends on the time zone you are. Um, my message is, is stimulating you to think about your development. So let me share some ideas and of course using some slides as a resource. We um, decided to call this intervention um, and I, I don't want to call this a webinar or a speech. I would say that it's a little bit more than that. It's a space for reflection and uh, for rethinking what we have been doing in order to develop ourselves as leaders. So we decided to call this a new paths for a professional to develop analytical and leadership skills in global environments. I am Professor Alfredo Castro, and uh, it's my pleasure to guide you through a journey where I would like to show you some reality and some scenario that are uh, shaping the reality and the society in the next 10, 20 years from now. I have to tell you that we really are facing a new leadership wave. And why is that? Because leadership is being on top priority in terms of development, in terms of high level education. I myself, more than two decades, I have been delivering classes and working in very high level institutions in different countries. I will tell you about my uh, history. But now, uh, what I have to tell you is that we are facing a uh, unique and really disruptive scenario where and when and how and what. And, uh, and, and in this situation, we have to figure out what is in it for me in this new leadership wave. So welcome to a dynamic and connected world. You know that everybody says about, you know, uh, metaverse, uh, says about hybrid cloud, uh, says about uh, virtual teams and so on. But let's stop and think about what's happening. I tell you what's happening. The trends in the new workplace will lead to disruptions in leadership. Yes, what we have been calling leadership will, will be reshaped. And if it's so, because this is combined and this is, a, uh, this is an outcome from the disruption on society, on the companies, on the way we do business and the way we lead people. So in this disrupt scenario, I think that we have to do one thing and this thing must be on the top list of our issues and challenges for the next years. Learn faster, learn faster. But what is the meaning of learning? And then why should we do this faster? Dealing with uh, students and uh, high level courses like um, uh, masters, MBAs, uh, post graduation, you know, very high level management courses, uh, high level uh, coaching and mentoring of executives. I can tell you that I have sorted out a kind of a word cloud. And the word cloud looked like this. If you consider that the leadership is being disrupted because of the new trends and the new demands, uh, how you can really lead with more. Um, humility, giving feedback in a hybrid and virtual work, workspace, 
how you can be a better storyteller, how you can develop people, how you can create agility, how can you innovate, how can you develop people? Wow, woof. This is uh, really like, you know, this is challenging. But on the, other, on the other hand, I would like to say that this is, you know, something that looks like, wow, very difficult to achieve. No, no, it's not. It depends on your willingness, your readiness, your openness to learn. And I would like to say to relearn. I would like even to say that you would let you would have to learn how to learn in a in a different reality in a new, in a different scenario. I would like to share with you some data and some uh, facts so that we can really realign uh, what is happening in this uh, scenario. The World Economic Forum published a very comprehensive report in 2020 in October. And uh, what, is, what, what amazes me is that they say, straightly, 40% of the workers will require reskilling in the next years. If it's so, how are you leading these employees? So we have some uh, real um, different scenarios and actions that are being redesigning and they are helping to redesign businesses and structures. We are facing more flattering, flattening organization structures. What I mean by that is that we have liquid structures. We have very dynamic structures. Uh, maybe along the week, uh, one day you are leading one cell or one uh, alum. And then the other day you are being led by other colleagues. This is, this is a different paradigm. Uh, so uh, companies are starting to adopt new models of leadership, proposing blended approach, management development. So it means that the management development is not as it used to be in the past. Shifting focus to development on soft skills. And then everybody talks about soft skills now. Why? Because, yeah, this is really fundamental. So you have to search a space, a course, a program, um, you have to find your tribe, you have to find people, colleagues that are really interested in learning as you are. Yes, welcome to a new leadership wave. And uh, what is critical for the 2030 leader? I think that the collaborative orientation would be key. Uh, the, the leader of the future, and of course, starting today, is a developer of people. Uh, he or she will be learning in, in an agile philosophy. Um, this person must be digitally proficient and, and uh, really be a niggle in terms of dealing with digital and, and not only, but advocate the, the digital um, actions, the spaces, solutions, and, uh, and, and challenges. So how to develop analytical and leadership skills in this global environment? So if we can foresee what's next, I would like to say, yeah, you have to find ways to prepare yourself to these new worldwide challenges, to this new uh, leadership wave. So let's start thinking about you. What about your career? Have you thought about reshaping your career? And by reshaping your career, I would like to propose as an advisor, as a colleague, as a learner, um, as a person who, like you, are always interested in, in, in learning, I would like to propose that you should think in your career in a very broad way and decide that this is not one thing that you have to do in order to accomplish or achieve the term level on your current company or as an entrepreneur, uh, you know, you will just grow and then uh, contract more and more people and make more business. No, I would like to propose that you focus your career 
not only in a broader way, but as a lifelong process. So think of the decisions you make that will contribute to this uh, new career, this reshaping of your career. And then, uh, for example, I, I, I am breaking here, I'm sharing with you one lesson, and people love this, one lesson that I used to uh, propose for students on the Profuturo uh, International MBA. I say, because I am in charge for the uh, leadership and disruption and career management. Then I say, look, let's search and let's try to analyze if your career really um, fill this uh, six elements here. Do you have a creative career? Do you have opportunities to be creative um, on, on your day to day? And what about ambitious, to be ambitious? What about uh, dreaming about going beyond uh, the, the tasks and responsibilities you have right now? But the third element, it's also something that shakes us that that is are you realistic about what you do are you realistic about what you propose what you provide to your company to your society to your team are you enthusiastic are you dealing with extraordinary uh challenges people and uh, are you doing something that is really really extraordinary. So if you can combine all these elements, then it comes the last but not least element. That is, are you being rewarded by this? So this is a disruption on the way you see your career. And I would propose another thing that people used to say, Alfredo, but is it true? Yeah, you have to figure out how to earn, which is good, how to learn, and how to laugh together. Yeah, because uh, I think that it's, it's old school, you know, sitting down on a desk and look at people and say, oh, I am the boss here. No, no way. Of course, this is the old school. I think that we have to figure out and we have to realize that we have to find new pathways and we have to create as leaders Yes, a workplace where we can laugh. So then you see my work cloud is very similar to the leadership work cloud. So then you have career management and disruption just in the middle as, as a major you know, uh, word here. And then you have many components that you have identified on when I, uh, when I showed you the leadership work cloud. Let me give you another hint and another tip based on facts. I love science. And as a professor, I really like to uh, stimulate you to find your way, but I always believe on data. Mercer uh, had recently published a global talent friends study. It's, it's really very interesting because it's based on about 11,000 uh, respondents. And it's... Uh, you know, 16 geographical uh, regions and 13 industries. So it's really very uh, global. So they say that what keeps the C-suite up at night? We have four, four uh, topics that would provide um, not only uh, awareness here, but I would say these would guide us as leaders to identify what we have to do and how we have to develop ourselves to fulfill those issues. And here you can see that they classified the, 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 the theme by region. So you have top concern in North America, Asia, Europe, and Latin America. Let's examine the cyber risk and data security. Yes, this is a top concern in North America. Um, I, I used to live in Miami. I, I've been living in Miami for seven years, and uh, I'm still a president of MOT Training and Development, a consulting company that is based really in Miami. So United States and Canada, North America, and, and I will include Mexico. I think that we have a full range of um, awareness about the cyber risk. 
I think that this uh, is, is something that is a, is a flag that you, you should uh, put really very high and say, look, this is one issue that would stimulate you to provide uh, awarenesses, knowledge, and educational programs on how to deal with uh, risk in the cyberspace. Then in Asia, it's the business resilience. And, and, and then what I understand by that is that in Asia, I think that we have a tremendous challenge that is the multicultural and multi-talented uh, in industry. It's, it's an enormous amount of industries and, uh, and Asia is very large and with, with the largest population. So to be a leader and to develop the leader of the future there uh, would you know, come across this uh, solving some issues and challenges that we find on business resilience. Then for Europe, and, and I'm living now in Lisbon, Portugal, I'm speaking from Lisbon, Portugal right now, then I would, I, I would like to say that the digital acceleration is something that has shaken Europe. And why is that? Because I can see that we have many customers, we have many consumers, we have many companies here and many leaders that are searching their way on how to interpret, how to be an advocate, how to be an ambassador, how to be uh, a, a, an eagle on the digital resources, uh, spaces, and so on. And then coming to Latin America, I think that they are searching new work models, which is really uh, focused on the new leadership um, style. Over 55% of the executives that were interviewed shared that this uh, workforce concerns uh, would guide the next year. So difficulty hiring the right talent, I think this is a great issue here because people um, are being sorted, but then it's difficult to fit one good leader to that uh, the term culture. High employee absence is impacting productivity. I think that with the uh, pandemic, I think that everybody uh, is started to reconfigure their workspace. And then we have some movements on kind of a returning to the, the old space. And we have some mismatches on this way. Then the third one is the fatigue. I think, I think that people wrongly, and don't go this way wrongly, they say, oh, I, I have a, a, a remote fatigue. And, and, and this, uh, this is due by, you know, many meetings and trainings and learning processes uh, done by virtual resources. Wrong way. Why? Because this is here to stay, of course, and this will increase. So you have to develop on the other way around, your ability on how to deal with that. Loss of talent to the pandemic, yes, we have seen that, and managing a more cross-border workforce. So what's the name of the game then? Knowledge. The name of the game is knowledge. Knowledge has been the name of the game for more than 20,000 years. But what's different um, on the years 2020 is that the knowledge, apparently, it's easy to obtain. Mm, don't think this way. I would propose that you rephrase your, 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 your thought and then uh, try to figure out how you can engage on some uh, or high-level educational programs or how you can integrate uh, social groups that are trying to develop and study uh, maybe and, uh, master's opportunities on how to listen stories, share stories of success. So uh, the name of the game and the game changed a little bit. So I would say instead of e-learning, we learning. I remember in Chicago making a speech at uh, the largest uh, talent development conference, AATD in Chicago. I remember that I really said that, but I said that this uh, 12 years ago, right? And uh, since then, I, I am searching about the difference that instead of adopting an e-learning uh, mindset 
and, and model, I think that we have to intensify what we uh, can define by learning by sharing, learning by telling stories, learning by reshaping your way of learning. And then because of that, I have to explain to you two dimensional um, pillars. One is consciousness and the other one is competence. Consciousness is, what is consciousness? Consciousness is to be aware what's happening around you. So if you are conscious, is that because you can identify what is happening, what you need to, to learn, what you need to, to, to do in order to give that feedback, in order to be a coach or a mentor of that, of that person. And then uh, unconscious, of course, is the opposite. Is uh, whenever you don't have you know, any idea of what's happening around you. And of course, competence. Competence is due to knowledge, right? Competence is having the knowledge to do something well. Uh, and of course, incompetence is the lack of that knowledge, the lack of ability to do something in the proper way. So I would like to propose that in a, in a learning journey, especially when you are uh, a manager or a director, or if you want to be a candidate for those positions, you have to search a very high level program and institution where, in, uh, where we research those trends and where we say, look, go this way, or we have these options and you can figure out what option would be better for you. But then I propose that we have three levels. The first level of, of understanding of knowledge, the first level is I know. What I mean by that, if you are conscious of the competence you need, you are okay, you, you know it, right? So let's imagine, the other day I was coaching, I am a coach for, for high level executives. I was coaching Flavia, uh, she, she lives in, in Paris and she is uh, leading a very multicultural group uh, of a very large and global company. And Flavia was telling me that she was um, thinking about, you know, how she could give feedback in a proper way because she was facing some mismatch, some misunderstandings on the feedback that she used to give to, to people of, of her uh, team. Then I said, look, I think that you know how to do it. Uh, you are conscious of this need and you have competence because you have been giving feedback to your previous teams. So this is a case of identify the crucial moments and to identify vital behaviors so that you can give a precise feedback and stimulate people to do what is, what is right to do and, and what will uh, generate conditions to obtain the result that you want. And Flavia said, oh, okay. So she is aware of, of her competence. But then let's imagine that um, she is right. And then she says to me, Alfredo, it's because I was giving you feedback to a person and I didn't know uh, some aspects of the culture. And this person is from Asia. I am from Europe. So I would like to learn more about cultural aspects on giving feedback. So this is the second level. She knows that she doesn't know. So whenever you know that you don't know something, you are good because you know the gap. The gap is clear to you. The problem is when you are in the third level. The third level is unconscious incompetence. Huh? What I mean by that is whenever a leader doesn't know that he or she doesn't know something. You understand what I mean? So in general, uh, when a person starts, um, for example, one high level MBA, and this person is exposed to very high level topics, strategic topics on uh, strategical thinking, economics, marketing, leadership, career, and so on, uh, the person realizes that he or she even didn't know that he or she didn't know that subject. 
So I invite you to reanalyze uh, your career and prepare yourself to learn how to learn. Combining knowledge with behavior is like knowledge is know it, but behavior is do it, right? Because at the end, what's learning? Learning is the process of acquiring new understanding knowledge and be able to decide. But you have to search for learning experiences. So we are facing a different, you know, a different environment. So the, the, the learning experience must be, um, you know, equal to these challenges. Um, let me share with you a map that I propose to my students. And uh, they, they are from Par Futuro. We have an international MBA. And uh, in this international MBA, I propose them how they could identify, if, if you want a copy of this map that I'm showing right now, I can provide you with a copy. And uh, then we have some competences here from, I have knowledge in how ensuring the success of teams, balance with key initiatives, coming from, I know how to give feedback. I know relevant aspects of self awareness that can help. From, I know how to disrupt and redefine business around what target customers seek to achieve. So this map is a very complex and very complete map where the leader can identify gaps, can reflect and can find those you know, hidden needs the third level, right? You get it. So it's it was a pleasure to be here. I hope that I could, you know, uh, try to make you reflect about some uh, issues and challenges that we're going to be facing next years to come. I am a FIA Profuturo MBA manager, people had. I am faculty for more than 22 years, especially in Profuturo. I am, as I said, president of MOT Training and Development based in Miami. I am based in Lisbon, Portugal, founder and board director of Click Institute. This is an institute that is a, is a think, think tank based in Washington, DC, fo focus on future studies. And uh, as a keynote speaker, consultant, coach, I delivered uh, programs for more than 20, uh, 120 companies in Europe, Americas, Africa, and Asia. Those are some logos and uh, some, you know, uh, companies that I had the privilege to serve as a consultant. And I hope that you have your return on investment. The investment is very clear and the return is even more. So I would be here to help you to find your way to find new paths for a professional to develop analytical and leadership skills in global environments. If you want to scan the QR code, you can find me at the LinkedIn, okay? So thank you very, very much. Thank you, Alfredo. <laughs> uh, actually, we have uh, Ahmed and Rosan Rosangela online. They have Hi. some questions. Um, uh, Something to comment, some comments. Uh, here. <laughs> Thank you, Ahmed. <laughs> professor, uh, professor. Yes, I think uh, that we have, yeah, in the Q&A, uh, we have, yes. Thank you so much, professor, for this beautiful seminar. Right. Thank you very much. <laughs> so I thank you uh, for being here and that uh, you are my colleague. So it looks like we together, we are aligned with the, the, this, this need for, you know, developing a new career, a new learning and uh, pathway so that we can be a good leader for the years to come. Thank you very much and congrats. Thank you, Professor. Uh, also, we, as Professor Alfredo uh, mentioned, uh, I think is uh, I think is interesting to mention uh, his uh, online course on Coursera's platform. Uh, can you br uh, bring some insights about it, Professor? Yes, of course. 
Thank you very much mm -hmm. for asking. Uh, we published and we have uh, thousands of students already uh, in. Uh, we have a course that is called uh, Leadership and Disruption. It's a very interesting course because uh, in 12 lessons, we explain this phenomena of the new workspace. And by the way, it was recorded before pandemic. And at that time, it was recorded three years ago. And then, um, and, and, and at that time, we uh, almost, you know, uh, we could tell and share the students almost 100% of the trends that we were identifying. This uh, leadership and disruption is interesting because it would fit for you if you need to develop yourself as a team leader, if you want to develop your inner leader, and, and it means your self-knowledge. And it's good if you want to disrupt and help to disrupt the businesses. Uh, maybe sometimes the company you are working for, maybe sometimes the company that you are uh, investing and you are leading. So leadership and disruption is a very good course. Uh, we have been receiving excellent uh, evaluations and comments. We have been facing students really interested in developing themselves. We have been having uh, people and receiving some feedback that they, that they could implement the, the coaching model, the holacracy model. They could implement, for example, uh, new solutions, uh, how they can coach, mentor, uh, counsel, uh, give feedback in for in, in in this hybrid reality. So it is it is a very good course to uh, study and to go through. Thank you, Alfredo. Uh, Ahmed has one uh, one more question. Uh, actually, uh, no, no, <laughs> don't ask, don't don't be shy, okay, Ahmed, because uh, we are here to to know uh you're interesting in the in our mba uh so alfred he he's uh, ask, asking if he, we have just some live sessions on mba so i i i think that you can answer again this uh, yeah. this question yeah. okay yeah. <laughs> thank you professor fabiana yeah uh i love the mba of course we have uh recorded sessions and we it, this is very good. Why? Because the session is well and professionally recorded with uh, resources and we have some contents. Then we uh, suggest uh, readings, we have quizzes, we have papers, we have case studies, because I believe, strongly believe on the case study. But what happens then? Uh, from time to time, we set up some live sessions. And this is amazing because you have both. You have synchronous and you have asynchronous uh, situations and scenarios. So you can study whenever you want. So you can split the lessons. You can uh, stop, you can review a video, which is very good, very useful, by the way. Uh, and then we have live sessions, yes, with, with live questions like this. And even we go further because uh, we bring some really updated uh, case studies or something that is happening, just, just happened, for example, in Asia or in Europe or in, in, in Americas, in, in Africa or in Australia. So uh, it's, it's a fantastic course. It's, it's a blend. It's a blend learning uh, process. So yes. You have live sessions, and of course, you have asynchronous sessions, yes. Uh, and also, we'll be able to have some office hours to ask our questions. We'll be able to communicate directly with our professors. Uh, you, you have direct communications because you can send questions. You can uh, count on them in terms of how you can uh, solve uh, a problem or a challenge. So yeah, it's very comprehensive. And we are, at least I tell on my name, I mean, it's, a, it's always a pleasure uh, 
to answer questions and to help uh, people uh, that are really focused on their development. Yes. Thank you very much. For and just to questions. complement, uh, just uh, to complement uh, the question, uh, as actually we have office hours also with uh, with other others others professors. Okay, Ahmed. And uh, I am. Uh, let me introduce myself. I'm so sorry about that. But I'm Fabiana. I'm the project manager for this MBA of uh, with the with in partnership with Coursera. Okay, so we have uh, we have uh, spaces and we have uh, schedules for office hours with me, office hours with professors, and uh, office hours with our assistant professor, who, who is a professor. Dedic dedicated to Coursera's uh, doubts, questions, and some the qu uh, questions about the students, okay? So it's, uh, I think we have these questions. Do we have more? Do you want to have comments? Uh, okay. okay, so uh, I think we're done here. Okay, professor. So uh, thank you so much about it. Uh, in the chat, I will put the link. Uh, put the link to the leadership course of, of Professor Alfredo, and uh, I have the, the link for the um, for the MBA, uh, all of the MBA. If you want, uh, if you want uh, more information and uh, or talk uh, talk with us send uh, send us a message send us an email okay so we are we are so glad to have have you here and uh, we hope and and we, uh, and wait if you are here to uh, wait here you in our mba okay enroll in your our mba Okay. Okay. So yeah. before we night. start, before we start, okay. uh, before we finish, I would like to mm -hmm. say hello to Rosangel Quaglio because she's been a great leader and she's always interested in learning. So she's she's a fantastic leader and a fantastic okay. consultant. And uh, I, I would like to say uh, hello mm -hmm. to Andrea, to Tim Ha, to Disani and to Ahmed. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. So we uh, good, uh, have a nice uh, rest of night, professor. Okay, so we are, on, we are finishing our day here in Brazil and you are in Europe. So I am thank tomorrow. you for the I am in the future. I'm in the future. So you are, then you tomorrow, are in the future. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yes, of course. Okay. Thank you for Four the hours. audience. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So well, uh, we are we are here for more questions or we are done here. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Thank you audience. Thank you so much.